أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تعمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and the guidance of coming out and offering our Juma Salah. Praise be to Allah. All praises are due to him, of whose favors nobody is deprived, and of whose bounties nobody needs despair. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. His glory and greatness are not subject to any change. His knowledge is supreme, and his orders are binding. And I bear witness that Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is his servant and messenger, who was sent as a warner and a bearer of glad tidings in order to bring mankind from darkness into light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on the followers of his guidance. Alhamdulillah, for today's khutbah, I have chosen one word, and that is kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaitanir rajeem, Allahu latifum bi ibadihi yarzuku may yashau. The meaning of which Allah is gracious and kind to his slaves. He gives provision to whom he wills and he is all strong and mighty. Allah is gracious and kind to his slaves. He gives provision to whom he wills and he is strong and mighty. Chapter 42, Ayah 19. Aisha Umul Mu'minin narrated that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, Allah is kind and He loves kindness. He confers upon kindness what He does not confer upon severity and does not confer upon anything else but he confers upon kindness. And this hadith is taken from Sai Muslim. I want to give you a short story about kindness. There was a young student, a young boy, selling goods door to door in order to pay through his school. So one day he was very hungry but had little money. So he decided he would ask for a meal at the next house on his sales route. He knocked at the door and a beautiful woman 
open the door. He lose or he lost his nerves when he saw her. Indeed, he asked for a drink of water. She looked at him and thought that this poor boy looked very hungry. As a result, she bought him a large glass of milk and some snacks. He was overjoyed. He sat on the front porch and slowly enjoyed his snack and milk. He profusely thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanked the young woman too. He was hoping the milk and snack were for free. So he nevertheless asked her, how much I owe you? She replied, you do not owe me anything. Mother taught us never to accept payment for kindness. He said again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Many years later, the woman became critically ill with a rare ailment. The local doctors were, bef were baffled. Her condition was rapidly deteriorating. They sent her to a modern hospital in the big city. By the time the specialist saw her, she was already in a coma. The, speciali the specialist reached and studied her case carefully. He did his best. He made dua for her. It was a long and hard struggle. The specialist asked the staff to pay special attention to her, for she meant a great deal to him. Alhamdulillah, the battle was finally won. The business office sent the final bill to the specialist for approval, and the specialist looked at the bill and wrote something on it. When she received, when that lady, old woman, received the bill, she was afraid to open it. She knew that the extent of her treatment, consequently, she expect a large bill. She thought that she would ask the hospital to accept an installment payment plan so that she would pay a little time. She finally mustered the courage to open an envelope. Sure enough, it was a large amount. However, something caught her eyes or her attention. Handwritten across the front page of the bill, was the following words. This bill was paid in full with one glass of refreshing milk and some great snacks. I thank Allah for enabling me to help you back to good health. Be healthy. Tears of joy flowed from her eyes and she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most kind. My dear brothers and sisters, this is something from us to take, you know, lesson. One act of goodness, one act of kindness, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much. We take the example of the prostitute who went down in that well and take that shoe and fill it with water and bring it and give it to that dog on a very hot day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved that act so much that he forgave her her sins and give her Jannah. Subhanallah. And this is only a little act of kindness. And this is to a dog. What about me and you? What about me and you who give kindness to someone? someone like our human beings, our brothers and our sisters, like ourselves. You know, a couple weeks ago, maybe last week or so, one brother came in at Maghrib time. And when he came in, he asked, he said, Imam, I recently come in this country, maybe less than two weeks, 
All my money is done. I have two children and I have a wife. I have no job. My children is hungry. And I, you know, I want something for them to eat. At that time, there were a couple brothers in Masjid. So I make appeal, brothers. You know, we have a brother and he need little assistance to buy groceries. The brothers in the masjid were so willing and so kind and generous. They said, okay. And everyone, every one of them give that brother something. And we take him and we go and get groceries for him. The brother was so happy and so contented. So he couldn't don't thank. He said, Imam, thanks a lot. You know, I want to thank the brothers in the masjid who supported me in giving this brother little donation. My dear brothers and sisters, kindness, acts of kindness goes a very long way. Acts of kindness never goes without notice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repays us in this life. Maybe Allah reserves our reward for us in the hereafter. Other times, may Allah repay us both in this life and the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Kindness connotes that we do not seek payment from those to whom we are kind. Our reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give us the opportunity to repay kindness to the person who was kind to us. My dear brothers and sisters, we should really forgive all those who have offended us. This is not necessarily for their sake. Mostly, it is for our benefit. It will mean, if sincere, that we want to save them from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a plus for us. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us too, so we forgive others. Forgiveness is the economy of the heart. It saves the expense of anger, the cause of hatred, and the waste of time. When one forgives, we in no way change the past. However, we do change the future. Insha'Allah. A reminder. Do you know that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns our happiness? Why do we look for happiness elsewhere? Every job we do is a portrait of ourselves. Let us autograph our job with ihsan, excellence. It is the sunnah to strive for excellence in anything we do. If we want the children to turn out well, we spend more quality time with them. Quality time with the children will bring better result than to spend our money extravagantly on them. Insha'Allah. And recently, you know, one teenager, young lady, she, you know, her father take her to the sheikh and tells sheikh, my daughter don't listen to me. He complained to the sheikh about her. He said, I give her everything. Everything she wants, I give her. I give, and I give her the best. And still she is not satisfied with me. I don't know. So I want you to talk to her. So the shaker, before you know, he went, he asked her, he said, what is the matter with you that your father has to complain? And the young girl said, my father, I love my father. 
everything my father have done for me is okay right but uh, i want my father i want my father so parents brothers and sisters our children you know we don't have to give them everything you know we don't have to give them everything but one thing we have to give them and that is time time and love if we have children and we don't spend this quality time with them then what kind of parents are we yes enough we give them everything they want but if we don't spend time and we don't you know give them this quality time of us this love and understanding and this time then what they are heading no way and the girl asks he says shake i want my father you see i don't want all this thing i know it, this is a plus for me but i want my father so children you know they love the parent but at the same time we have to give them back this this love and this kindness alhamdulillah when you teach the children do not tell them wall have ears tell them angels have pens and the angels are writing down everything we do or we say we have to be careful of what we do or say especially in secret allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector do not look elsewhere or to someone or anything else for protection in allah we put our trust fear allah and do good deeds beware of our enemies shaitan and his mode of operation he tries to prevent us from getting closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be aware our parents can we or can be our ticket to jannah to paradise this is a time sensitive bounty do not blow it they may go soon my dear brothers and sisters we have to understand this parents you know they are our jannah when one parent die one door of jannah is closed so alhamdulillah if we have parents and they are alive then and we want jannah then we have to treat them nice treat them with kindness lower that wing of humility for them and inshallah jannah will be yours whether it is our spouse or our brother or sister or a friend if we have to correct anyone we do it or we do so with love and sensitivity and in privacy give sadaqa abundantly as we can and think about that yes each one of us it is inevitable what we will tell our lord or allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we meet him to remember the sick the hungry and the needy is to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where to suppose the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where to knock on our door one day are we ready to open the door for him do we have to tell him to wait out there until we fix up the house first always let our homes be conducive to worship remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us only to worship him yes that is our purpose that is our purpose in this life are we fulfilling that purpose my dear brothers and sisters think of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is all the way up in the heavens know that despite his highness grandeur majesty and supremacy 
see. He is directly looking and listening to you and me. We should refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we do anything. After we have finished doing something, we should refer to him again. It will, inshallah, improve our deeds and lives. We always keep him in our memory. Beware of our tongue. Our words are like bullets. Once relieved, or once relieved, they do not return. They hit a target. They can result in good or harm. We should want for others what we want for ourselves. This is easy to say, but difficult to accomplish. However, it is a divine concept that can help us to be more just. Let's try it. Al-Quran is the manual whereby we live our lives. The Sunnah explains and demonstrates this manual. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take up the Quran and read it at least five, ten minutes a day. It is a duty to, uh, towards the Quran. We owe this Quran this duty to read it. Words to live by, love, human, humility, gentleness, modesty, honesty, truthfulness, generosity, knowledge, and piety. Words that can destroy us, such as arrogance, dishonesty, miserliness, lies, ignorance, adultery, fornication, and anger. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give us a burden more than we can bear. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We just have to be patient and trust in him. After every difficulty, there is relief. And to, him, and to emphasize this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا Chapter 94, Ayah 5 and 6. My dear brothers and sisters, we are coming close to the closing of the Islamic year. And we will be entering a new year a new month and a sacred month which will be Muharram. In these days, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with such that if we really know the benefit of these days, then we will, you know, constantly try to do our good deeds and ibadah. These days are blessed. You know, and here again we have Muharram coming. Muharram is a blessed and sacred month. Let us all try, no arguing, no fighting, no quarreling. Let us all try and do extra ibadah, extra salah, extra zik, extra sadaqah, and inshallah this will benefit us. Every sadness or happiness Every failure or success, every problem or every blessing is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise Him and to make dua to Him. Seize the opportunity to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is most bountiful, worthy of all praise. Before we make dua or pray, or do anything, we should take a moment and think and fully, and fully comprehend what we are about to do. Which is it of the favors of our Lord will you deny? Hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our loving creator. 
is asking which is it of the favors you will deny. My dear brothers and sisters, we cannot deny none of the favors of our Lord. Let us, try, let us all try in our humble way, in our humble way to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. This is one of the greatest niyama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask for forgiveness. Dua, every dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. No dua goes unwanted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our condition into the best ones, for He is most powerful, most wise. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al wa nafana wa iyaakum bi ayati zikri al-hakim innahu ta'ala jawarun parimun maliku bararu furai. Brothers, come forward a little. So the brothers in the back who stand in, they will get room, inshallah. Pull up the empty gaps. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inabmadahu wa nasta'inahu. Wanastaghfir <laughs> ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأدار من صلى وصاب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإيسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أولى وأولى وأأز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة